I can't remember the last time I was in a situation like this. Falling, falling, falling with nowhere to go and no end in sight. Of course the little prick pushed me. I should have seen it coming. I took a nice long sigh, needed to get my head cleared up. Fortunately, that fool was so damn full of himself he actually thought he was done with me. I stared at the point directly below me, zoning out of the rabbit blur running past my eyes. Focus on the point. Nothing but the point. Now imagine the door. Embrace that the door is there. See the door. I smiled as my wooden salvation quickly began to enlarge with my descent. With a flick of my wrist, the plank opened out of the frame, putting that sweet abyss directly in my path. Before I fell through the gate, I hissed one quick warning. I know you see this, Sawyer. Ah! I woke up with a fright, sending Betsy scampering out of the room like a scared cat. Almost immediately, I could hear his head running into something followed by the sound of lots of things breaking. God damn it, Betsy. There was a new noise now, the sound of my roommate's feet loudly stumping their way to my room. Sawyer, what the fuck? Ian screamed at me from my door with groggy eyes. Oh, relax. Just had a nasty dream about this creepy substitute teacher guy. Nothing to worry about. Go back to bed. And maybe let Betsy out quickly? Why the fuck are you still here, Sawyer? You're supposed to be gone. How the fuck did you even get back in? Ah, so you did steal my key. Was wondering where that disappeared to. Anyways, you forgot to lock the windows. Really need to start doing that, Ian. Some nut job is gonna break in one of these days, you know? Get out! Oh, come on. My rent is still paid to the end of the month, isn't it? What was even the big deal anyway? Ian scoffed in disbelief. The problem was you fucking told us all there was a gas leak and then set all our pets free. Even Samantha's lizard. And I got you all a new one. A better one, in fact. How many people do you know who have the privilege of owning a goat, Ian? Just like that, something suddenly started banging around in the other room. Betsy suddenly scampered by with the microwave door caught in one of his horns. He was wagging it around, desperately trying to fling it off. Kate, that was the rest of your rent money, Ian said, pointing in the direction Bessie had taken off. Out. I waited a good half hour before all the lights were off inside before jumping into Ian's car and driving away. I had snatched the keys while I was being ushered out. Once I was gone, I pretty much just started driving. It wasn't like I had any real plan, other than eventually finding Kelly. But the thing was... These books I got from Lester, they were fucking huge. Half the crap in the things barely made any sense at all. Just all kinds of weird mumbo jumbo about vibrations, polarity, and all these other crap. Oh yeah, if you're just jumping into this, you might want to start off where I first met Lester. Probably should have put that at the top. Eh, fuck it, you'll figure it out. Anyway, I turned up the radio and just started cruising. Though some have expressed feelings of concern about the group, its members have stated to be nothing more than a peaceful organization simply set on returning to the former glory of its origin. Ah, Jesus Christ, music! I want fucking music! I reached over and changed the channel. And now for an exclusive interview from one of their members. Her name is Jessica Springle and she's head of the new order of the Golden Dawn. I froze. The fuck? Good evening, Jessica, and welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> But please, the pleasure is all mine. Now, Jessica, the first thing our listeners want to know is what exactly is the Golden Dawn? Well, the original Order of the Golden Dawn was a hermetic organization mostly based in England around... I started to zone out of the conversation as my brain tried to process what exactly this meant. Didn't get anywhere. My attention quickly changed to the road ahead. Just, where the fuck was I? I don't think I've ever been on this bloody road before. Too narrow to be a highway, but all I was seeing were trees. Like the flick of a switch, my attention was quickly turned back to the radio with the mention of... Sawyer? Yeah, he's been hard for us to find. We're confident he'll turn up sooner or later. We have what he wants, after all. Well, if you ask me, it sounds like this Sawyer should be seeking you out himself, instead of making your poor masters have to wait. So unprofessional. Oh, don't you worry. I have a feeling we'll be meeting soon enough. Besides... He's listening to this. Aren't you, Sawyer? I looked up out the windshield and screamed. Just a bit up ahead, standing in the middle of the road, was fucking Lester. He was staring right into my eyes, showing me the worst goddamn smile I'd ever seen him make. 
I slammed on the brakes. The car shifted and lost its traction quickly, spinning around the road in a circle. I was sure I was going to hit him, but nothing happened. Breathing heavily, I quickly looked out each window trying to find where he went. Instead, I saw a few houses and some fields. No trees, no Lester. I turned my attention back to the radio. I quickly turned off the radio, suddenly annoyed. No, not listening to that crap. I drove into town, found a few homeless guys and sold them Ian's car for $10 and a bag of shitty coke, then was off to find a motel. I found this lovely little place right in the middle of town with a half-working sign and... Okay, it wasn't that nice, but the lady at the counter gave me a room for $10 and the coke. Anything you need, love? She asked. Yes, I replied. Booze. She pointed me to a cramped little hole in the wall where the lights were dim and the patrons all smelled like cigarettes and suicidal thoughts. Beer was six for two, though, and the music wasn't bad. I bought my nighttime medicine, found myself a little corner away from the pool table and the folk persistently annoying the bartender with forced conversation. I sat down and opened one of Lester's books, the one regarding the Golden Dawn. One may change his mental vibration of will in the direction of deliberately fixing the attention upon a more desirable state. I flipped through to another random page. Beware of mental miserlines and express into action that which you have learned. Study the axioms and aphorisms, but practice them. Oh, what the fuck even is this? I blurted out, unintentionally catching myself too late. I looked up to see the entire bar was now staring at me. I flashed the room a smile before quickly turning back to the book. Why the hell can't they just explain this shit like normal people? I muttered to myself. Because the Don learned long ago it's a bad idea to leave your pearls before swine. Someone interrupted me. I looked up at the intruder. Her pretty face stared back and shot me a smile. She looked too young for this kind of bar. But to be fair, so was I. Without any hesitation, she pulled herself out of a chair and sat down at my table. Her hair was jet black, colored streaks of red running throughout. On her eyes, she wore black makeup in the shape of those little Egyptian-style stripes going off to the sides. Hello, Sawyer, she said with a smirk. Who the fuck are you? Jessica Springle. She reached a hand over the table, which I stared at for a second and then ignored. Who? Her eyes suddenly flashed with annoyance. From the radio? She replied. Oh, shit. I froze up for a moment, a bit caught off guard. I tried not to show my reaction, but Jessica seemed to catch it almost immediately. Saw it in her eyes. She began to chuckle. It's okay, Sawyer. You don't have to worry. Though, I'll admit, I expected it to take much more than that to spook the man that beat Lester at his own game. I shoveled in my seat, quickly regaining my composure. Lester was just a fucking turd, I replied. Seriously, I don't know how that dickhead even made it as long as he did. The first two games he threw at me were just stupid, and the last one... Well, okay, the last one got dicey at a few points, but it was still... I stopped talking. The way she was staring at me, I could just feel that this was what she wanted. Get me talking. Warm up to me. Also, I swear to God, during the whole conversation, I don't think she broke eye contact once. Like, don't get me wrong, the girl was definitely cute, but that's a little much. What do you want? I said bluntly. Well, for starters, I wanted to meet the man that took Lester on, she stated. But, as I'm sure you're probably aware, I have a proposition for you. As I'm sure you know, I've recently been named head of a new organization that aims to rebuild- Yeah, yeah, the Golden Dawn. Listen, how much do you actually know about the original Dawn? Because I saw them and trust me, <laughs> they are nothing you want to look up to. Hell, it only took fucking Lester to- Mid-sentence, Jessica suddenly snapped her fingers. The bar and everything in it, including us and our table, suddenly folded away into darkness. In only a second, we were suddenly flying in the air. The world below started to look rounder and rounder as we went up. Whoa, what the hell? Oh, calm your tits, Jessica said to me unimpressed. I simply decided to show you a fraction of our order's true power. Lester, gifted though he may have had limits to his abilities. With the dawn rising once again, I have been able to learn things even be- Are you paying attention? I was half bent over staring down at the planet slowly becoming a smaller ball of blue. Just how fucking high do you plan to take us? I asked without looking up. Jessica snapped her fingers again. 
Just like that, we were sitting in a hollow tube of a rock. Below us, lava boiled and jumped at our feet. No, 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 I liked space more. I heard her groan and snap her fingers once again. We were back in orbit, the blue ball staying below us this time. Good? She asked. I let out a sigh. Okay. Okay. So you learned a few magic tricks. What was the deal again? Finally, she looked absolutely baffled. Seriously? You actually looked like you were about to shit yourself just two seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. About that, I'm assuming this whole thing is some kind of illusion, right? What? Yeah, I figured. I hopped out of the seat and jumped back into the bar, ready to stroll my way out when an angry hand suddenly grabbed my collar and pulled me right back into space. Oh, god damn it! what do you want? I asked, annoyed. Jessica just stared at me for a moment. Her eyes were wide, but I couldn't piece together why. So you really do have a gift then? Jesus, I don't even know how we would begin to work with that. The hell are you talking about? Uh, here. She suddenly shoved me off my chair. Catching me off guard, I quickly came to the realization that I hadn't fallen back on the bar's floor. I was floating helplessly away from my chair while Jessica smirked at me. It was never an illusion, Sawyer, she said. But somehow, your belief that it was manifested you right back where we started. It's actually incredible. I've never seen anyone able to- Look, that's nice, but I'm actually floating away here? I shot back. She snapped her fingers again. I crashed down on the floor of the bar. Amazingly, none of the patrons seemed to notice. I picked myself up to see her once again staring at me with a smile. Some of my associates would very much like to meet with you, Sawyer, she exclaimed. Yeah, Secret Chiefs, whatever, weird-ass name you decided to call those freaks. Listen, I don't think- Just be quiet, she cut me off. I'm not really sure how to approach someone quite like yourself. But I know what you want, Sawyer. We can help you get her back. That got my attention. Just think about it, she said, standing up. We'll contact you soon. And, Sawyer, it would be very foolish to disappoint our masters. With that, she left me lying on the floor of the bar. A few people finally glanced over, and after I did get up, the bartender refused to serve me anymore. Fucking prude. Half tipsy, I strolled around town until I found a liquor store and snatched a new bottle of absinthe. I made my way back to the motel, where I proceeded to drink half that bottle while watching shitty TV shows and munching on some overpriced wings. Finally, I passed out. Sawyer. Sawyer. Sawyer! I woke up with another jump. The nightmares wouldn't stop. I was gonna need more booze. I was about to roll back to sleep when I noticed the fucking door to my motel room was hanging open. I sat up, took a quick look around the room, and then shrieked. There was a fucking big fat man hiding in the shadows. As I cowered in the bed, he slowly approached, emerging from the shade to show me the similar face I recognized as Lester. With a twisted smile, he said, Holla holla, dickhead. Let's talk. Half awake and ungodly hungover, I groaned. This one was by far the worst conversation I've ever had with him.